Ξεκίνεται το κήπεδο, πλησιάζει την περιοχή και... Κατέβασε και εσύ το Beton Alpha app και μη χάσεις ούτε ένα γκολ. Beton Alpha. Ανεβήκαμε κατηγορία. Um, I mean, his presence was bad for the was very bad for the team, and he was the risk was that one guy could uh, jeopardize all what we had done in 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 two years. So I was very clear with this guy face to face and with the, with the board about him. But I told him, look, don't 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 come between me and my dream because I will crush you. And so I, th- these were my words with the with uh, with that guy with his new star player, and he. he It was it was better and it it, it played well at the when, when when the season started. Just to tell you that I'm a very peaceful person, but I I will not let anyone uh, stand between me and my dream. I will always my values will always will always be stronger. Hey, Dol, welcome to a very special edition of the No Chof Des podcast, powered by Bet on Alpha. Visit betonalpha.com.cy for the best odds out there in Cyprus. I'm still. I've got a special guest here, Stefan, returning to the podcast. How are you doing, Stefan? You good? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> Great to have you on again, my friend. And well, first of all, how have you been? How is your your Ghent doing since we <laughs> since we talked about Europe? <laughs> um, well, let's say that they are struggling quite a bit. Oh, boy. Um, after uh, Ammonia has uh, <laughs> crushed their dream of uh, qualifying for the Europa League, they uh, are still struggling, uh, both in Europe as in uh, the National League. So, yeah, the pressure is rising. Uh, coach is still there, won't leave uh, for the next time being. But I don't think they are uh, really enjoying themselves <laughs> for the moment. And they are, oh, yeah, they are looking for... A better, uh, better shape and uh, some good results. Well, I hope it uh, hope it works out for you, man, because you've got <laughs> a very good team there, and um, you know it will be great to see Ghent back in Europe next season. Yeah, well, uh, they have they have the talent, they have the the players to to achieve to achieve that. But uh, at this uh, moment, I think they are uh, yeah focusing on this season and trying to. Yeah, get in that playoff one. I already told about uh, the Belgian uh, league uh, system. So the top four, they are playing for the, the, the title at the end of the season. So it will be quite a battle for Ghent to get in that uh, top four. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're here to talk about our new head coach, Yannick Ferrara. An exciting appointment, I must admit. I didn't know too much about him. I still don't know too much about him, hence the reason why Stefan is here. But that video clip I played earlier was from the Mastering the Mind podcast done yeah. in April. And um, it's a very refreshing take on football. And do you know what? The one thing that stood out most, obviously, from the whole episode was that particular clip. Because right now, I believe that we need a very headstrong coach that knows how to motivate the players, but also to be progressive and to play a completely different style to what we're seeing at the moment. We saw... Uh, Henning Berg play a 4-2-3-1, a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-3-1. Um, same with Lennon, even though in Europe we've played a, a 3-5-2 system. But things haven't been working. And we've uh, spoken about the mentality of the players. We've spoken about the ability of the players. But we haven't really touched on the progressive nature of having a head coach that is modern. And Stefan, what can you tell us about... Mr. Ferrara. Well, if you're tol- talking about uh, Yannick Ferreira, you're talking about a very young, ambitious and modern coach. It's somebody who is, uh, yeah, he's some- a guy who uh, stood up for his own dream. Like he said in the clip, don't come between him and his dream or he'll crush you. And yeah, that's some typical quote for Yannick Ferreira. He's... Um, he, he came from the bottom and now he's there, <laughs> like you used to say. Um, and it's quite quite thrilling to see how he's progressing in, in his career. He's following his own path. He's not 
following the the typical cliche uh, kind of career path that a Belgian coach is normally following. Um, he has uh, had a, a short spell in uh, Saudi Arabia as an assistant with uh, Michel Prudhomme. That, that was a head coach of Ghent, where he used to start in professional football. Don't forget... A very good goalkeeper as a play, uh, when he was playing Prudhomme. Um, before we all got to know uh, Thibaut Courtois, we used to say that Michel Prudhomme was the best of the Belgium uh, goalkeeper history. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, quite a tradition here in Belgium for good goalkeepers. So uh, quite, uh, uh, yeah, quite a big name here in Belgium and also in Portugal, where he had some very good uh, performances for Benfica. But uh, Ferreira, he, he, he started uh, way back in uh, Anderlecht, uh, in the youth uh, academy of the club. And then he... Uh, took uh, his chance in Ghent, where he started off as yeah, as a trainee, let's say it like it was. It was uh, a young guy who came in in the staff for uh, helping out the the, 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 the staff for the, the playoff uh, of uh, the 2010 playoff, where Ghent finished as a, a second and where they uh, also won the, the cup uh, that season. So it was at that time, the best season of Ghent in the history of the club. And later on that summer, Predom left the club and went to Saudi Arabia. And he took along um, Yannick Ferreira. And that was his first uh, big step in his career, following in, following in the steps footsteps of uh, Predom. was very important for him to, yeah, to get some experience, of course, in professional football coaching. Uh, he has uh, learned uh, quite a big uh, thing with uh, Michel Prudhomme. But then in 2012, he became head coach in Charleroi. Uh, it's uh, a decent club over here in Belgium. Not a top, top club, but a decent club. Well uh, managed now. At that time, a little bit uh, in uh, turmoil. But it was interesting to see him over there. Um, didn't work out that uh, that nice for him. Already sacked in uh, after yeah twenty seven games something like that. So it wasn't um, wasn't the big success he was hoping for. But then he he took his chance in Centrale, and that was quite interesting. He he was very uh, successful over there, and it was the reason why uh, Standard, one of the big teams in Belgium. Standard de Liège, they uh, were quite impressed by him. And in uh, Standard, he he has won the, the, his first title as a, as a coach. Let's say he won his first cup, the Cup of Belgium um, in 2016. And everybody was considering him, uh, Yannick Ferreira at that moment as yeah uh, the next big thing. I mean, people were quite fond of him, quite uh, intrigued. Because the way he's uh, conducting his his job, it's not the cliche style. He's not the 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 guy who's on the on the bench shouting and cursing all the time. But he's not the the, the phlegmatic guy who is uh, as a, a statue standing along the sideline. No, he's, he's a bit of a combination of the both of the, of all you, you can imagine. But it's more the way he's uh, working with his players as well. He's uh, very close to his players. He's very ambitious. And that's also the way he's treating his uh, his uh, squad. He's really pushing them to, to perform. And that, yeah, that went very good in, in Standard up till uh, he won the, 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 the cup. And then, yeah, Standard is a bit... Um, we, we call them a, an Italian squad in the Belgian league. Uh, it's always very, very... Um, stressful over there uh it's not it's never quiet uh and uh, business as usual in liege so at, at a, a certain time he got sacked but then he he and that was very typical he, he got uh, sacked in liege and some days later he already had a new club uh, in uh, mechelen and there also he was quite uh, okay and one time then in 2019 he he was waiting for a new club and people were wondering what's going on with Yannick Ferreira. Why is he 
uh, not uh, managing a club because everybody was um, uh, everybody was interested in the next step that he would take in his career. And then he ended up in Saudi Arabia in Al Fateh, and there he stayed for yeah. Of course, with COVID, was it quite uh, uh, not the, the 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 time he was looking for, but quite decent as well. And now yeah, he en he ends up in in Cyprus and. Frankly, that was a, a big surprise for me as well, because for me, Yannick Ferreira is somebody who I think he he needs um, a new start. Um, and I think he, he considers the, the European games that are left as, as a good uh, benchmark for him as a coach, as a managing uh, guy to get himself in, in the spotlights again. The thing is, Stefan, when Lennon, when Lennon's sacking was announced, yeah. it didn't come as a shock to a lot of us, not just because of the results, but because of the things that we've heard about him off the field. Mm -hmm. And you and I have spoken about this off mm -hmm. air, so I'm not going to repeat the things that I've heard, but to <laughs> see the look of amazement on your face. <laughs> I think, a, yeah. was it they say a picture is worth a thousand words or something along those lines? But um, Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> But but this uh, you know Ferreira appears to be a uh, a progressive head coach and you know yeah. mastering the mind who are watching the pod now. I watched some of their pod earlier and he seems mm -hmm. very well spoken. Um, he can speak many languages, which is yeah. always a help given that we have French speaking, uh, you know English speaking players at our club, and it's, yeah. it's fantastic. But in terms of his playing style, I was speaking to a friend, I'm not going to mention his name, but he said, even said to me, if this guy hits the ground running, he'll be a fantastic coach for you guys. But expect him to play 3-5-2. Now, that's the question that a lot of people have been asking me. Can you ask what the tactics are like? Tactics, tactics. Stefan, you know him best. What, what kind of system do you think he will play? Well, frankly, I... I quickly uh, took a, a quick look at uh, his uh, former uh, uh, seasons in uh, Alpha Ternal, and he's still trying to play a 4-2-3-1. That's his favorite um, uh, tactic. Of course, I know him quite, quite well. He will always try, of course, that system, but he's not uh, fixed. It's, it's not that it's the only system he can uh, play. He's quite uh, flexible in, in that front as well. Um, and especially because it's it's a progressive trainer. It's it's not somebody of uh, the Middle Ages, you know. I, I mean, he, he knows that he has to adapt his system to the, the players he is working with. Uh, and if he is... Uh, yeah, if he will work with uh, with this team in uh, in Cyprus, and he will uh, come to the conclusion that they perform better in a four two three or in a three five two, he won't hesitate to implement that uh, system. But if you look, ask me now right away, which is the system? Which system will he will he try to choose? I think it will be a four two three one. Excellent. Now there's there's loads of uh, questions in. There's one here. Should we just skip his stats? Because as a good character it might be, it doesn't seem like he has what he takes. Well, okay. <laughs> you, it, it's easy to to pass judgment on a head coach that hasn't won anything in his career. But I'll I'll spin this back, Nick Nicola. Sorry. Um, there's a certain manager called Maurizio Pochettino, who a lot of people were saying was one of the best head coaches in the world when he went to Spurs. But prior mm -hmm. to going to Paris Saint-Germain, he won a grand total of zero trophies. Now, I'm not saying that Fer Ferrara is anywhere near Pochettino, but don't let the stats fool you. Because uh, women lie, men lie, stats don't lie. Well, they do in this case. Let's get it right. So you never know. And, and there's another comment here, which I don't really want to address. Not when you're on here, Stefan, because it's not fair for you because you're, you're our guest. But there's, there's uh, something to do with some corruption or whatever. Look, at the end of the day, you tell me one head coach in the whole world that's clean. You tell me one. Every Someone has got a little bit of dirt, whether it is a foot fetish or whether they take bribes, whatever, okay? But if anything has been proven, then come and talk to me. I'll, talk, I'll discuss this with you off, off camera, whoever wants to talk to me about this in my, in my Instagram. I'm happy to talk about this. But I'm not going to do it right now, especially not when we've got a guest here, man. Come on, let's, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. But... um. 
Yeah, sorry about that, Stefan. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> but look, at the end of the day, um, we've come from uh, a head coach, as I said, with Henningberg. We won titles with him. We won a cup with Lennon. Right now, we're sitting in a very precarious position in the Cypriot League. We're eight points behind the top team, who we face at the weekend. I know the manager won't be on the bench that day. So he'll, his first game will probably be... Yeah. Uh, will it be Saucier dad or will it be Anostasi? One of the two. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but do you think he's done his research on the club prior to, to joining? Oh, yeah. Because, oh yeah. yeah, for sure, yes. Uh, if there's somebody of manager I know, uh, like I do him, uh, if there's somebody who is uh, famous for his research, it's Yannick Ferreira. I mean, he's obsessed with uh, football, uh, called ask him for a, a player who is now in uh, Cyprus. He will already know him, for sure. Um, and, of course, you can't predict when a new coach starts at a club if he will be successful or not. The the, the influence of the uh, of a selection of, of uh, players is too big to predict. I mean... Um, that's why I, I, I consider him as an interesting uh, pick of um, of, of Omonia Nicosia, but especially it's also interesting to see uh, whether he will uh, get this club running. I mean, this is not a small club in in Cyprus, so I'm I'm really uh, thrilled uh, to see how he will perform over there. Yeah. When you mentioned the four two three one system, are we looking at um, a side that will play high up the field, especially with the fullbacks. The reason why I ask is because we have two fullbacks who are very, very good at getting forward. Okay, one of them isn't as good as what he was, but I'm guessing that's probably because of the, the management or whatever system that he was involved in. But, you know, we've, we've got a very uh, attack-minded team if you look at the players on paper, but it's just that we just can't get the defensive structure right. And we're conceding the same type of goals as we did with the previous management. So this is clearly an ability issue. But going back to my original question with, with the fullbacks and the attacking prowess, are we going to see a very attack-minded system? Or are we going to be like getting men behind the ball and attempt to hit teams on the counter-attack? I think that uh, it will depend from the opponent. I mean, if you're playing Real Sociedad, you can't expect Omonia Nicosia to play very high press. If, if, you, if you try that, it's suicide. I mean, um, you have to adapt a little to the, the opponent, but especially to the abilities of your team. If I hear you say that somebody is, isn't uh, at his best level anymore, you can't expect that a coach will try something that is impossible. If you try this on and on again and it's not succeeding, you have to try uh, to, to look for another solution. And I think that uh, Ferreira will, will, of course, try to implement, um, yeah, that he will try to get this team uh, in, in a system that is working and that is delivering results uh, at the end of the day. Going back to the original clip, Stefan, that I showed at the beginning, yeah. where he said, you know, there was a player and he took into one side and said, this is my philosophy, this is my way. He can do that with players, but what about the board? Because mm. you probably don't know this, but we've spoken at great length for this podcast about certain people on the board who perhaps are a little bit too involved, per se. That's, a, that's, a, that's the best way I can put it. Do you think he will find it frustrating if transfers are done that perhaps aren't players that he wants or perhaps certain things are done in the background that he doesn't like? Because, again, this is conjecture, so I'm not saying this is... Fact, but from the things that we've heard, certain things happen in the background at this club that upset the managers a little bit or frustrate them, should I say? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, he has his, his his experience in the Middle East. I mean, if you work for more than, yeah, let's say, more than two years in uh, Al Fateh, I don't think that uh, the people over there in the board is uh, that they are all... Uh, very quiet and that they are obeying the, the wishes of the manager they will have to uh, they try to to influence of course uh, the decisions uh, also but 
I think he he has uh, he has uh, evolved in in the way he is um, uh, conducting with those kind of issues. Uh, in in his starting years, he was yeah he, he was Yannick Ferrer was the the type of Spanish uh, uh, yeah, the, the guy who is already uh, in 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 almost in tears of his if he is very uh, angry eh, you know um, he's he, now he's more uh, more easygoing he knows how uh, football world is running I don't think he will be too upset but of course if he is uh, yeah, if, if, if the board is doing stuff that's really uh, opposed to, to what he is uh, trying to do, yeah, then you will have a pitch fight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there's another question here. Did he achieve anything as a player? Did he play at no. a good level? I, I don't know. No, but no, my, no, my no, response no. to that, my response to that, Stefan, is if you look at perhaps two of the most successful head coaches in the modern era, Arsene Wenger and Jose Mourinho, did yeah. they play at a decent level? Because I, I don't think they did. So I don't think it's fair to really judge a, a head coach based on their. There's uh, no guarantee in that. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it look is. at look at Viali and look at Ruth Hullet. They weren't particularly yeah. great as head coaches. So anyway, mm -hmm. it's a bad example. But uh, there's a question here about will we expect him to bring some of his coaching team? If so, how many members? Before you uh, before you answer that, Stefan, there's there's a comment here which answers that question. I was actually going to say it myself. The, they only allow one, they, they allow the head coach to bring in one of his assistants. Mm -hmm. And that's purely because in the past, the club has brought in the head coaches and they brought in four or five members of the staff. The coaches get sacked and they got to start again. But what yeah. they want to do is keep it in house mm -hmm. with the staff yeah. that have helped yeah. develop players, et cetera, et cetera. So he's only allowed one, one person. So who do you think mm -hmm. that number two will be? At this moment, I haven't got a clue. I have to be uh, I have to be fair with you. Um, it's not that he's working all the time with the same people, um, but yeah, I'm I, I, I have no um, I'm not sure at this time. But I think that there will be some uh, Belgian, uh, yeah, uh, some Belgian assistant who will uh, follow him. Yeah. So if he looks at the squad now and he sees that perhaps. There are some players who shouldn't be there that are on big wages. Or is he the kind of guy that's gonna pull them to one side and talk to them and say, look, this is this is what I expect from you? Or is it like I've seen you play, you've had your opportunities, now go. I don't think that he will no, I think he will give them a chance, but uh a limited one. <laughs> um yeah. I don't think they have time to waste over there. So he will, yeah, he can't, he can't start with uh, some kind of a, a, a team that is only half a size. Eh? You have, you have to try to get your best uh, players in uh, on, on the fields. And then, okay, uh, if, if people aren't performing uh, until uh, expectations, so he will he will try to find other solutions. But I don't think that he will start right away with uh, eliminating uh, the half of the, the, the squad. So what about transfers then? Do you think, this is a question from my friend Roy, who's a co-host, but he's not here, unfortunately. But he says, what, what about transfers? Do you think he's got an eye for transfers and does he have the pool to bring in some players? Well, of course, he has his network. I mean, he's now uh, he's now a manager for more than twelve years, so he knows uh, who he can contact. That's for sure. He's a manager, so he's in is also in contact with uh, agents all over the place. <laughs> so he will. He will. Are we allowed to talk? Are we allowed to talk about the the agent? Be my guest. Because the, the reason why I, I bring this up is because you mentioned Charua, and yeah. um, isn't the the chairman um, what's his name? Ah, uh, Bayat is that his name? Yeah, Bayat? well, you have to be careful with uh, that name because you, it's it's a whole family of Bayats who are yeah, uh, involved right. in Belgian football. So the manager director of Charua is Mehdi Bayat. Yeah. He he even was for some time the president of the Belgian uh, Football Associ Association. Right. So quite a high guy in Belgian football. Um, but his uh, there's another uh, Bayat, Moji, who is a player agent. And 
yeah, he's quite involved in all uh, sorts of uh, scandals. Uh, but until now, he hasn't been uh, trial, so he's still working. He's still uh, conducting transfers all over the Europe. Um, and yeah, he was in touch also with uh, Yannick Ferreira. Yeah, yeah, because I, I know, I, the first payout you mentioned is the is the president of Charleroi, yeah. I believe, and and was was Yannick there at the time? I, I, I don't know. This is why, which is why I'm asking, but. Yeah, but Murchie also used to, the agent also used to work at Charleroi. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. because the, uh, he was the, he was the guy that was involved in Lamcoze, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's true. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, yeah, we, you saw what happened with with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment with uh, Lamcoze, of course. <laughs> What's he doing with himself anyway? Now I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, he's thing. now playing in Belgium for Kostek. That's a small team over here. Over here and. Yeah, well, he's still the same Lam Kelsey, you know. He's still uh, doing crazy things on and off the pitch. So, <laughs> no no big change over there. I, I bet he will be the first footballer to go on Mars. They'll send him, NASA <laughs> will send him up to Mars. You see it perhaps, happening, can't you? <laughs> perhaps he, perhaps he has already already been there. You, you don't know with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you might see the, the, the space station and think, no, nah, it's not nice enough. It's not first class for me. <laughs> You know, no. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, for, digress. This is what we do on this pod. Um, so, uh, going back to Yannick, um, another question is: um, Does he have? Uh, okay, does he like to work with youngsters? This is very important for us, as you saw. You know, our central midfielder Hambos had a very good game against Ghent, scored in the first mm -hmm. and second leg, actually. Yeah, and he's broken through our academy. So, do you think Yannick can can improve the the youngsters as well? Yeah, don't forget he started his career in the youth academy of uh, Anderlecht. So there's still a touch with him of uh, liking young players, try to get them in the first team, let them develop to a higher level. So at that point, he's yeah certainly a coach who is giving chances to young, young players. Uh, but of course, like I said before, it's all about results. And if a board is demanding big results, then... You can't uh, expect that the coach is only giving chances to young guys. You also need experienced ones. You you need to get a mixture, and but it's it's not a coach that's only looking for old guys with lots of experience. It's also somebody who is trying to get the young ones uh, in the, in his squad. Excellent, excellent. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for joining us on the pod. It's uh, it's great insight. We know a lot more about this head coach. I just hope that he's given time. And the opportunity to do so because you know what happens in Cyprus um, it's happening more and more in Europe now where managers aren't given enough time uh, mm -hmm. one club this season in fact I'm not to see are on their second coach this season Ayala in their second coach this season Aboel in their second coach this season I'm sure there's another team that changed I think Olympia Goz are in the second coach this season so it, it changes frequently yeah. but I'd like to think that our club is different and I'd like to think that Yannick will get the opportunities to, to implement his style. It might take weeks, it might take months, but as long as we're seeing progress, that's, that's the key thing for us. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I don't think we're going to see the antics of a previous manager. So there you go. I think he has more claws than uh, his predecessor. <laughs> yes, there you go. Eight managers sacked in seven match weeks. <laughs> Eight. Okay. There you go. This is Cyprus. That's there we go. So still... Yeah. So, still, what's your opinion now after this conversation? Yanni, I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited. And, and it's like I said when Lennon's uh, announcement before, because I did a pod before Lennon's announcement was made. And then I did one for Lennon's announcement. And both of them, I was like, you know what? We need to back the manager. But I'm very underwhelmed because this isn't a progressive manager. And his achievements were 10, 15 years ago. Now we've got a head coach that perhaps is unproven. Yeah. But let's get it right. Gadala, who's the head coach of Abolon, their second place at the moment. He's doing a good job so far. They beat Azad Altmar the other day. No one was saying anything. And his first job was at Ayak last season. He didn't even have head coach experience. And he did well. So we need to be a bit patient. We need to uh, trust the process. Sorry, using that term. And <laughs> listen... We do what we do. We we back the club, we back the players, and we back the head coach. And you know, 
I'm a shilakamu. Stand, Stefan, thank you so much. Follow it. Go. Do you want to let our listeners know your, your um, Twitter handle or your Instagram, anything like that? Uh, well, you can all follow me on uh, Twitter, Stefan uh, at Kent. So uh, follow me. There you go. Lovely. Thank you, boys and girls, for tuning in. We'll be back very, very soon. So as I said, let's go.